Oh, I got five great interviews for you today. And you're gonna learn a lot. <laughs> I know I did. Man, every time I do one of these interviews, I, I learn so much. And, and it's little pieces of information that builds on something else. And I think that really changes my outlook, perspective, and, and really gives me new opportunities in life. That's why I like these interviews. Uh, uh, by themselves, they may not do anything, but it's a little piece of the puzzle trying to find out. Like there's a woman here you're gonna meet today who was a fashion model, you know, and then she decided to go to MBA school, you know, and, and now she's using the internet to get high, get those high fashion items for herself that she doesn't have to pay for, and everybody could do that now. So it's amazing how she's using the internet, taking her idea, and making a whole industry. She got uh, money for doing this, and, and it's all using the internet, and that's what's neat about it. There's another guy you're gonna meet who, who has a pen that makes toys, right? You know, you've heard of 3D printing and stuff like that, but there's a pen, like a pen that kids could make that pen and make toys. Who'd ever think about it? I, I could. And that's why people out there are sharing information and you don't have to wait for some big company to do anything anymore. Individuals are changing the world like that, you know, uh, or, or there's actually now, I send a lot of big video files all the time, you know, and it takes so long to upload and then, man, you're going to meet some people who knows how to do it now a lot faster and for free. Man, he's got a service that, that will outdo, you know, Dropbox and all these kind of people and, and it's free. I mean, see, that's another thing that's happening. What you've been using and, you know, paying money for, <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. There's new stuff and you got to keep up on it. Uh, also, there's a guy, it's a toy. You know, and actually your plants talk to you. But actually it's worthwhile because it tells you they're hungry, they're thirsty, they're drying out, they need nourishment or whatever it is. And for $15 and it's great for kids. So you gotta see how they, and how they do it. I mean, it's just people you know, with their own minds developing this stuff and the tools are out there for anybody to make things like that happen. You know? <laughs> and actually there's a wonderful thing to the, uh, for uh, crowd sharing. You know, this is for the shared economy. It's a platform. You know, like Airbnb. Now they're putting the, all the hotel chains out of business, and they don't have any hotel rooms. <laughs> but it's a new way. Well, here's a platform. You think of anything you could share, like maybe the lawnmowers in the neighborhood. Well, now there's a website to help you do that and make money at it. Man, so there's a way to take something. You don't have to worry about knowing the technology, just using it to make money. So watch all these. Now there's a lot of reasons why you gotta watch this next interview. Uh, one is to learn more about the shared economy. This is what's going on in our economy now. It's the share economy. I mean, why is somebody like uh, Airbnb now bigger than Hilton Hotels or, or Hyatt Hotels and they don't even own a piece of real estate? They're using other people's homes and apartments and everything like that. And they're just a middleman <laughs> putting things together. And they're worth like $10 billion, that company it is. You know? And that's in a shared economy. You know? So we're sharing. You know, Things like Uber or things like uh, uh, relay rides, people using other, providing rides and transportations or cars. You know, don't use Hertz who has to buy all these cars. You use people who aren't using their cars and they supply the cars and all you have is a website. So now this is probably gonna be one of the biggest growth areas in our economy or the new economy, what's going on in the world. But now all it takes is a website. Now, if you don't know how to build a website, well, here Here's a guy that has a website anybody could use for next to nothing, like 30 bucks or whatever. And his website does all of that stuff for you. So you just have to find a market, maybe in your neighborhood. You say, hey, you know, everybody's so many kids and I wanna, uh, you know, have like babysitters. So you have a shared economy babysitters where people come to one place that people wanna babysit, other people, you know, need babysitters and you have the website and you get a little percentage, you know, sort of like Airbnb or, uh, you know, relay rides and all these people that are doing this stuff, you know, I mean, uh, and that's how you make billions of dollars nowadays. I mean, see, these, it doesn't take a lot of employees or anything. It's just the middleman and the internet, you know, and that's what's going on in our country. It, it, it eliminates so much and it's able to organize the disparate, you know, the, the disparate things that are all around and under one roof to make it accessible to anybody, you know. 
and here's a website now that anybody could use to do one of these shared economies. I mean, I mean just like if you had, well, you know, we all want the special lawnmower equipment and things like that, but we don't use it all the time. So maybe you, should, <coughs> you start a website and somebody goes, oh, I could get a ride on lawnmower just the once a week I need it or once a month or whenever the heck I need it. And, and that could be a shared economy business, but you don't know how to do the website stuff and it's a big investment. Now you don't have to. It's a sort of the same thing when, you know, in the beginning, how you needed, you know, uh, special access to enter the, and use the internet itself, you know, and now somebody writes all the software and we all use it, you know, and it's almost for free. So that's like this. Somebody spends so much energy in their time and we all get the, re the use of it and now we're able to use it to create businesses that weren't even here before. And that's what's so neat. And it's not only for profit, it's actually for communities could use something like this. Uh, you wanna get all the people who have certain kind of talents. You know, maybe it's a great thing. Hey, you're gonna put actors and actresses all in, you know, uh, one website so we could all, you know, uh, people are looking for it and people who wanna hire and things like that. And if you run the website, you make a piece, you know, so you're making 10, 15, 20%. You know, that's why these companies are making billions of dollars doing this. So watch this. This is where things are going. And you don't want to be the last one at the station when the train has already left. So watch this train coming down. Well, you home. I gotta kill the name Mark Conan. <laughs> but who cares about the name? It's really sharetribe.com. And you guys in Finland there have this great idea. Actually, what it's wonderful for is entrepreneurs who want to start businesses and they don't have any money because you provide a platform you know, where you could have your own uh, Airbnb, you could have your own Uber, you could have a Uber for lawnmowers or for babysitters or <laughs> anything. And you've taken out all the computer stuff because you guys give it away for free for 30 days to see if your idea works, right? And then, then you just charge what you're starting at like $39 a month. That's terrific. So what made you think about this? I mean, did you see the future? Because you've been playing with this thing for so long and now you're ahead of the future. Yeah, exactly so. So we, me and my co-founder are we building our first peer-to-peer -peer marketplace already back in 2008 when wow. nobody really was talking about this share economy. <laughs> and since then we've just seen how tremendously this kind of phenomenon has grown. And a lot of people since then have asked us whether we could actually, they could actually use our solution to really build their own marketplace. So at some point we just decided that, hey, this is probably what we should do. And really so that people wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel, but instead they could just kind of focus on their specific idea and their community and they wouldn't have to know anything about technology. So we can just handle wow. all that. So it's anything for sharing. I mean, I, I think like even services. I mean, you want uh, kids to, somebody to cut your lawn instead of going to some lawn mowing company, you could find people in your area who, who have a lawn mower and have free time and they go on there and provide their services. And really as, as using your service, you, you're, you become like the middleman now and take a little percentage usually, right? And that could be a big business. Exactly, so the, pure, uh, the beauty of your places is that you don't really have to have your own inventory instead yeah. you're just connecting the supply and the demand and and basically building your community and taking us usually you take a small commission so let's say something like 10 percent from each right. sale. right well that's i mean when i look at the data like you know airbnb i mean i think they have only a thousand employees and that company is worth as much as hyatt hotels which has forty thousand employees <laughs> <laughs> and there's much worth as much as a Hyatt hotel that all they have is a website. So you could get into that model by using your your website because now you don't have to worry about how to build that website because you've done it for everybody. Exactly. So it's a really great way for entrepreneurs out there to really get started with their business fast. And this is a really get, marketplace piece can be really really scalable because yeah. there's a huge amount of inventory out there and like. For instance, Airbnb definitely is a good example. They are, they have more rooms than the biggest buildings without really owning any of those rooms. Right. So it's really quickly how, how you can scale that way. 
And we just start, we have an extra apartment downtown in Washington, D.C. And we just start, man, we, we just made 500 bucks over the weekend. I, I don't know where the hell it happened. <laughs> yeah. and so that's why you, you know, by using your site, I can help other people make money out of their stuff. But you know, also what seems to be important about your website is a community can use it as not only a for-profit, but a not-for-profit. I mean, just think if, you know, and not charging. I mean, people helping other seniors in the neighborhood who need help or something. So it seems like a way to share that information and help available and, and help your community somehow for free. Yeah, exactly, and that's the kind of the beauty of sharing economy, and what yeah. I really like it, about it. So people can uh, make money with it. People can uh, save some money. People can save their time. But then at the same time, they will also get to connect with other people in their local community, and, and obviously it's really great for their environment. So there's the sustainability aspect as well. So it's really kind of the win-win scenario. No, you're right. I mean, now, so so by using it, you're making money. You're saving money. You're saving time. But as you say, it's it's more personal way of doing business. I mean, if you're borrowing a, a you know a carpet sweeper or something from <laughs> you know Rental or some company, you don't even care how you bring it back. But you know, if Joe down the street is on the service and has his carpet cleaner available and it costs you 20 bucks. I mean, you think about Joe, you meet Joe, you understand his family. And, I mean, I, I used Airbnb for the first time recently. Man, the person who I rented from was wonderful. They helped me so much. I mean, nothing like the concierge that Hilton would ever do. <laughs> exactly. It's really all about the personal connection and really meeting new people. And, and that's really uh, something a lot different than just going to some online store and like sure. shopping from with a faceless kind of corporation. Right. You're buying these kits and services and renting from actual real people and that really makes a big difference. And I think all of us could, could not only not have so much junk in our house that we only use once a year, <laughs> but, but uh, so our overhead would be lower because we don't have to buy all this stuff. We could live on less money and, and really enjoy life a lot more. Uh, and the way you enjoy it is with other people in your life, and these other people are the people that are helping you, you know, through a website like yours. Exactly. And really, you can make money with stuff that are currently gathering dust in your closet, and you can, <laughs> like, and, and some of the stuff you don't even need to buy because you can just rent them really cheaply from somebody next door. So it's really. So great, you were great. saying, as a graduate student, you know, like what was it, like six, seven years ago now? Uh, you, you had this idea and you started it on your campus, on your university in Finland, right? Yeah, that's, that's very true. We started from the universe, Aalto University in, in Helsinki, Finland, and only for the students of the I campus. See. And, and it became popular there. And at that, that point, that was 2009 when we uh, launched the first version. And at that point, nobody really uh, was talking about the sharing economy and the whole concept uh, and the name was invented later and then we just realized, <laughs> hey, now everybody's talking about this thing that we have been doing already for years. <laughs> well, say, Look what that guy in Finland's doing! We gotta call this something! <laughs> they should have called it the Juho economy, that's what it should be. <laughs> 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 because that's why you, uh, you must be on the forefront of this thing and, and it, it's so great that you're, you're contributing so much and that's what's so neat. I mean a young man you know, with not a lot of financial resources or whatever just gets out and goes on the computer and invents this stuff and the rest of the world could use it and they save money and they make money and they save time and, and they have fun doing your, you know, using your product. You know? I mean to me that's better than going on a cruise line. You know? <laughs> oh. We've really received some great feedback that I know some people who actually quit their jobs to do this full time kind wow. of like to do their peer to peer marketplace and, and they do with, with our platform and they have been really satisfied and they wow. have said to us, Okay, with your, without your platform I couldn't have done I it in any it. other way they don't right. know anything about programming, they don't have the money to get a full right. freelancer. So basically this has been the only way for them to really get started. So really you're opening up the you know, new economy for people who really don't know how to program or anything about computers. You don't have to because you've taken all that away from them and now that we all can participate in this new economy where all the money is going on. I mean that's at least here in the United States the biggest revenue generating businesses are all just you know 
little websites, that's it. You know, whether it's Uber or uh, you know, Facebook and all that. So you can be your own Facebook now, you know, or whatever it is, by using your platform, and that's sharedtribe.com, right? <laughs> and you don't even know it's from Finland, you just know it's cool. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being there and, and using your talent to create this and share it with the rest of the world. And, uh, best of luck to you. Man. Yeah, you don't need it. You're doing so well. You don't need my help. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, take thank care. You. Bye now. Take care. Bye. Okay, you, so you probably have learned <laughs> that there's something called 3D printers in the world now, right? I mean, they don't print paper, they print stuff. You know, you want to make a case for your iPhone. You know, you turn on your 3D printer and it makes it. You know, one guy I talked to who has a 3D printer, even can make shoes if you want. Now that appeals to me if I need pink shoes to go with an outfit. <laughs> I can just turn on my 3D printer. Well, here's a neat way that you could make, you know, toys for kids. Actually, kids can make their own toys. And not with a 3D printer, this is with a pen. Something as big as a pen that stuff comes out and you can draw your, make your own toys like that. <laughs> technology is just amazing. And, and now it's safe and it's for kids and everything. A 3D toy maker that's as big as a pen. Now, isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it's just not even in stores yet. That's why the people are crowdfunding on it. Uh, and, and you can get it at a bargain price, but even to know about it. I mean, this is what's important, I think, about life. Even if you don't need to make toys now, or your kids, or make little gadgets you can with a pen, uh, that you know about that technology that's available, so you will see applications <clears throat> you know, that you can use, or like the computer. If you don't know what the computer can do, then how are you going to use it to solve problems you may have? You have, you know, it's sort of like having a toolbox now. Now our toolboxes are not just a hammer and you know a screwdriver or whatever. Now it's so ultimate, so big. So if you know there's a 3D pen that you can make little stuff for. Yeah, just stuff the size of a pen. You know, just to know that, to have that into into your you know bag of tricks for the future. And the same way with things on the internet. What kind of websites are there? What's available to solve problems you have? Like we just did an interview on uh, a platform that you can have your own sharing economy and somebody's done a platform for this. My son has just used a platform and teaches them how to make 3D graphics, you know. And Gosh, you know, it's nothing, you know. You don't have to go to school and get a PhD in this stuff. You just have to know what's available out there. So watch this so you know what's out there. Well, Steve Cho, man. <laughs> and, and actually it's 3dp.fm, not .com, not .inc, or not .anything, but FM, because you're part of a team that invented a damn pen that makes toys, that makes stuff, just by writing. I mean, it's incredible. I've never seen anything like that. But first of all, we have to tell people about your head. I'm sorry about your accident. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, yeah. this is not brain surgery you're recovering from. What is it from? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I am in Bali training uh, MMA right now, and I got punched in the ear, and then a blood vessel popped in my ear. So, like uh, my ear swell, my earlobe swelled up. So I had to go get it drained before I, it gets too too scarred and creates scarring tissue, on, which comes up to a phenomenon called uh, cauliflower ears, ears, which is prevalent right. among. Uh, wrestlers and Brazilian jiu-jitsu artists. Right. So, so. I see. Okay, we said. But more importantly, this is another hat you're wearing. <laughs> it, it is yeah, for yeah. the Polly's Q Q1, right? And it's a, yes. it, 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 it's like a 3D printer in your hand, right? And it, but for kids too, right, right. for anybody, right? Correct, you can make correct, anything correct. you want out of this stuff, and any kind of color you want. <laughs> you yes, can yes. make toys and all kinds of stuff for yourself. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, and, and actually, you guys have finished developing it now, and you're you're raising money on Kickstarter, right? And, and, correct. And, and that's it. You're you're after you know what, uh, seventy grand, or you no, know, you're after fifty grand, and you're up to seventy already. Yeah, 72, yep, correct. And, and you got like a month to go, man. You, you're home free. What the, why aren't you out <laughs> having fun instead of working, trying to sell? Yeah, 
just uh, sitting on the beach drinking <laughs> pina coladas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it is a unique thing. I mean, it, it seems like, you know, what you guys put together will revolutionize everything because I guess there are other pens out there on the market, but they're hot as hell because they have to melt all that stuff, right? Exactly. Yes. Uh, I have a, actually, so our main, our main priority for this one and developing this was uh, safety. And because all the previous other ones that exist out there, it's not that safe and you either get burned or you have overexposure to UV light. So this is something that we wanted to be more accessible to all people and especially kids. And that was our, and all the, with that principle, we centered the design and the engineering around all that. Wow. But it is, it's like, uh, I mean, you can't make a shoe out of your 3D printer, but I guess you can theoretically <laughs> with one of these. Things. A shoe? Oh, there's, <laughs> with, with, with advances in material sciences, there's actually, the, I, I read an article about like a 3D pen that is like making clothes or making threads or something. And from that, uh, who knows what can happen, you know? But I mean, I, I saw you know, in your video, that's one thing people ought to see. It's just to go to your website and watch the video. Yeah, because yeah, these yeah. kids have glasses. I mean, see, I, I, I'm a glasses freak. I got a dozen up, upstairs, you know? And so I couldn't really, out there with this pen is make my own glasses, glass break. Yeah, 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 it's exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's cool stuff. And, and not only that, but you, 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 you have special plastic that comes out of the pen that changes color with temperature right and that kind of thing you have it glow in the dark even that you know kind right, of material right. that glows in the dark and even transparent stuff i mean that's what right. i say man it'd be great to have transparent glasses you know be... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just put some glitter on the outside or something like that yeah, you know yeah. well that's amazing so what other kind of applications are people using for this besides kids having fun making toys so, um, the main, I guess, a problem it does solve is, you know, uh, expediting the conceptualization uh -huh. to, to uh, actual physical, tangible actualization um, process. Because, like, people with 3D printers, they need to be able to use uh, software or, you know, CAD software. And then, but for kids who are with, like, unlimited creativity... They could just go straight to, to that without needing to develop the technical proficiency of using these software applications. Um, other applications could be, well, I think it's just more, well, so for us, we are curious to see what people will do with it because, you know, like you're only limited by your imagination in that sense. So you're giving like a box and, of crayons to kids, but it's more than crayons to make something. You know, it, it is, you know, material you can make things out of. Yeah, we, exactly. Whether it's a little Gumby dolls you want to make or <laughs> exactly, and you're not yeah. So you're not like like traditional drawing. You're not limited with a two uh, limited to a two D plane. You can do it on an X, Y, and Z axis. So it's just so you're seeing how how you can like. I'm just sure there's something going crazy off in your brain when you're just making something like that. So, uh, well, the kids are smarter than this than we are. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I actually, I actually, I actually have a prototype. Uh, the first okay. prototype that that, wow. that made. Yeah. The so this is from the shipping and it's kind of it's 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 seen some years. It's got a, gone through a lot of testing and I was testing it, and um, but this is the initial one that made the uh that shipped outside of its manufacturing. And to make to sh to make it to the uh, U.S. To, that, that made it to the U.S. and I carried take, took it with me to Bali and I was using it, but I ran out of ink because I was just having so much fun with it. <laughs> and um, it's just really cool just to see you know how this works and uh, and like. It, it, it's, but I can't get over, you know, on Kickstarter now, I mean, the price is what, under 50 bucks, man, it's nothing. Exactly. Yeah, for the early bird, so. Yeah, I mean, and so that's why, I mean, before, I mean, I, I can imagine, you know, in a year from now, when this gets distributed, you're going to be a lot higher price, so if anybody at all interested in being one of the first on the block with one of these things, well, man, mm -hmm. what a toy. I mean, what a great thing for a grown-up. What are you, anybody, I mean, you, you have a pen that you could build something right out your fountain pen yeah you know, that's fantastic uh so to find out about it you go to 3dp that's three then D, D is in david p is in pen dot fm like fm radio and uh it'll take you to kickstarter there and you find out about it and actually you should go to kickstarter just see that video i mean that's a cool video you guys did yeah, I think. See, I think now you're a video guy, aren't you, Steve? So that's yes, sir. 
I am. I try. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we were talking before we went out of the air here. Steve was telling me he goes around the world and, and doing rap videos of, of explaining cultures in other countries. So you're really, you're hip on videos. <laughs> uh, well, this is something you. unique. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm like, I like this one. I can call it my own. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being there, Steve. And hope your ear okay. gets better. And, I appreciate uh, it. And people want to see that, it's 3dp.fm. And find out about the polys, P-O-L-Y-E-S 10, which, man, that's a cool thing. Thanks for you young guys making all this neat stuff for the next generation behind us. <laughs> hey, 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 Take care. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I say something? Yeah. Um, so this project was actually, the, uh, the Kickstarter with all, for all the political issues right. was delayed like, two to three weeks, right? We were supposed to uh, have this launch from November 15 and then end on December 15. And then, but, uh, so that because if once it finished, we would be ready to ship out immediately for in time for Christmas. But because this is what, this is what's amazing about that because there's, they would essentially be the first pro, uh, first safe 3D printing pen to market. And that's why I believe in these guys so much for their ability to sp speedily deliver. Uh, unlike other hardware projects on Kickstarter yeah, that like that, that are delayed like over a year, so you're gonna get this like in January or February, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Okay, yeah. well, maybe, <laughs> well, get it become before it comes to a store near you and it costs too much. You gotta get it now <laughs> on Kickstarter. Thank yeah, you. yeah, you could go go to the pen and go to the Kickstarter and back us, and then you get your pre order, and we're gonna ship it to you asap once we're done. Wonderful. Thanks again, Steve. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This next interview will show you how technology is shortening the lifespan of any product now. I mean, <laughs> look at how, how even, you know, Microsoft and they sound so big, but they had all the market. Now their market is shrinking. Everybody's market is shrinking. These guys have found a new way to send files. Now everybody like me, I mean, I don't send emails with a letter anymore. I'm sending videos, like hours worth of videos. And I use things like Dropbox, you know, and WeTransfer, and, and, because they've been around for a while and, and it's really old technology. These guys have something that's cheaper because Dropbox and all these other people charge you. They, they, they let you have a peanut or two for free and then they're gonna get your money. These people will let you send as much, as long as you live, you know, for free. And they have other little, features that they'll charge extra money for, you know, eventually. Uh, but the basic service of sending a file here to there, and I've used it, and, and it's so easy to use. I download it it's so easy on, and to put it on a computer. And see, on the other people, what they do is they, they you, you give them the file and it takes so long. I mean, my big video files will take, you know, maybe an hour or so to upload to somewhere and then download to the other person. This has new technology that cuts out the middleman. Not only the person who's wanting money, but also the server. So it goes directly. And, and I, I don't understand. I'm not technically smart enough in this kind of stuff to know how it really works. But you could test it and see it's faster. It's also easier. And, and, and that's the thing to me is fast and ease. But it's amazing to me. I mean, Dropbox and all these file sharing has only been around a few years. And their technology is on a date already. Now, now there's new guys, you know, who say, hey, you don't have to do it that way, you do it this way. I mean, just like, remember when we had a, a like a, a, a cassette diskettes we put in, <laughs> in our computers years ago. Uh, you know, and it, it, it's traveling faster than anything now. You know, and, and keeping up is hard. But what's neat about it is there are tools to solve the problems that we have today. So if you're in a business that requires large files or you want to send large files faster, you want to know about stuff like this because there's an easier way of doing things. And so that means you could sub have your customers happier because you're able to send them stuff better. Uh, so it's, if you don't know about the new things out there, you can't improve your life, your customer's life, or grow your own business without knowing what's available to you. It's all options in life. So start learning all the new options. And this is one, and it's free. <laughs> so test it, what the hell? Well, Baptiste, 
Faden. And actually, more importantly, man, you have this wonderful website I never heard of before, and I transfer files all the time, but you have a free file transfer service that, man, it doesn't matter how big my, <laughs> my files are or whatever. And actually, right before we went on, Baptiste, I, I signed up and I used it, and it's the most easiest thing I've ever used. I mean, it's unobtrusive, it's, it's logical. I mean, I'm not a 20 year old geek, you know, I'm an old guy and figure this out without any pain or effort. And, and it's just wonderful. And you say, this is gonna be free forever. How can you do this? How can you make things free for people and, <laughs> and not be the government? Um, yeah, actually we make it free because we wanted to firstly solve a huge problem that lots of people have today when you need to send files oh. that's always a pain in the ass right uh, and so with a friend of mine uh, we decided to create this company and solve that problem uh, so basically i've co-founded infinite with one of my best friends uh julian uh, he did a PhD at the University of Cambridge in UK about peer-to-peer mm. -peer and security. Uh, and we had this idea to create Infinite because even if I need to send some pictures or movies uh, uh, through Gmail or Dropbox yeah. or whatever, usually it doesn't work because it's too heavy. Yeah. Uh, when I'm using Dropbox, I need to put the file into my Dropbox. It takes hours. Oh, I need to it takes for forever. It to be uploaded so <laughs> I won't be notified uh, uh, yeah. if my friends received well the file so it's not convenient at mm -hmm. all and and as I said it has also file size constraints yeah. so uh, actually my friends who did his PhD he worked on peer-to-peer -peer and security and, and we wanted to address that problem with uh, two main pillars First one was obviously a technological pillar. Uh, uh -huh. We wanted to provide a really powerful technology <clears throat> in order to avoid users to always think about the file size. Is it going to work or not? And with his PhD, we had this awesome technology in our hands. But it, it wasn't enough. Uh, a technology is one thing, but if it's too hard to, to yeah. use, uh, or, or it's, it's too complicated, it's useless. So we spent months in order to build a really simple interface that oh. allows anyone to benefit from such a technology. Oh, exactly. I mean, it, it is so easy to use. I mean, even set up. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I used a file service you know, called WeTransfer. You know, they charge me money to do that. And it takes forever to load it up on those servers or whatever the hell they're doing and it and i i can't use the computer i'm afraid something will go wrong in the meantime and i don't want to touch it so my computer's tied up for an hour sometimes two because big video files take a long time don't they yes actually when you are using retransfer or dropbox uh -huh. data are going to be uh, uploaded on the servers with Infinite, when you send a file it goes from one computer to another one directly there's no server between computers, uh, so no file size limitations. It's faster than other cloud-based solution, and it's also more secure because we encrypt data locally, uh, so no one can see when you are sharing. Ah, uh, so in other words, actually, when you, you know, if you're using a server, you're really sending it twice. You're sending the server, then the server sends it down, and all yes. that kind of stuff. So uh, you're cutting out the middleman. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we won a national research contest last year about oh, this really? technology. Oh, really? Yes. Honest to gosh. Oh, that's terrific. Was that worth money in your pocket or what? We had a, a bit of money, but we, we've been really legitimate uh, on the I market. See. right. It yeah. was really important for us because so we were a startup, so we are young and new, so it right. was really important. <laughs> well, that's right. And, and looking at your site, too, and all the people involved, you've got 11 people. And actually, people are really excited about this because you have all these investors now that are letting you provide the best you know, file transfer thing in the world so that you, know, you become the mega giant. You're going to be the Microsoft of file transfer very soon. Yeah, right. this is kind of our goal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> as you said, actually, it's entirely free, but we have lots of, of course, professionals who are using our app yeah. already, like on a daily basis. 
So for them, we are going to provide next year some premium features I because see. they need advanced features, they need support, stuff like that. Yeah. So a, a part of the app will stay free for end users, uh, but we'll have like some premium features for professional. So you're going to learn how to make money on this thing once you get big enough, right? And once people realize it, but you're not going to pull the rug out from people once you <laughs> once you do this, that people who are using it free will be able to keep using it free. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. for people who will, who will need more features, we will be able to pay for them. Right. Ah, and that's how you guys will stay in business. Well, you got a ton of money already, you know, from the venture capital. So it's not only you and I who think this is cool. A lot of other smart people with a lot of big p money in their pockets also think it's cool, which is neat. And, and it just comes out of nowhere and comes out of hard work and research and you guys having fun. I mean, I think people have to go to your website just to read the biographies of you guys. I mean, you were a punk rock singer, right? And that's how you got into this. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very true. <laughs> yeah. And everybody comes from an eclectic background, you know, that, that were doing just crazy things in life and got together and creating this great service for everybody. And, and it's, you go to, now it's not a .com or a .net or anything, but it's a .io and it's in Fint. Infi how do you, infinite? Infinite? Infinite. Infinite.io, yes. Infinite.io. I N F I N I T. Dot IO. And transfer anything you want. Transfer your, your movies. Transfer emails. Transfer pictures. Transfer your mother in law. You can do that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Great you came up with this. And it's a fun thing. And you guys all sound like fun. And thanks for sharing your joy and your knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks to you, Matthew, to think about infinite. Great. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. I don't know, there was a movie out a few years ago, I, I remember seeing uh, that these two guys are trying to break into their house or something like that. I think it was their own home. They couldn't get in and they were locked out. And the one guy goes in his pocket and says, hey, don't worry, I got an app for that. And he takes out his phone and he smashes the window with his phone. <laughs> but this next interview, I mean, is about apps and what they're doing. And, and this is an app. Uh, that will tell <laughs> that gets your plants to tell you when they're thirsty or when they're too hot or when they're too cold <laughs> you know, or if they don't have enough soil. You know, <laughs> your plants start talking to you, and it's an app for like $15. That's it. See, I mean, the technology today, I mean, to me, is it, just phenomenal what, what's going on. You know, uh, and, and this app, because it's only $15, I mean, you put a little thing into your plant, you know, like me. And, it's gonna get rid of, you know, every time I have plants, it turns into a graveyard, yeah? And so I just go around, uh, you know, every couple of weeks or months and find the brown ones and put more green ones in. And now my plants can talk to me and tell me, hey, pay attention to me, I need something. But another neat thing about this app is kids. See, kids now, when a kid is born, you talk to a four-year-old or five-year-old or anything, they all walk around with tablets and iPhones and everything. So now on a kid's tablet, they can have their plants talking to them. So a kid can learn all about, <laughs> you know, that, that vegetables and food and things like this doesn't come always from Safeway. There's other ways to get this stuff, you know. And, and so it's a great learning tool and so many things. Or, or now I think what's very important too is uh, you know, our water supply, you know, is not infinite like everybody thinks. I mean, you talk to the people out in California or Colorado, man, <laughs> then we're going to have water wars going on out there. So how much water we use and things like that, that's what this app could regulate for. And, and I think what's amazing to me is that, you know, they're just normal people, you know, <laughs> out of nowhere say, hey, why don't we fix this? And they go out and work on the idea. See, that's what's so neat. You don't need a big Fortune 500 company. You don't need, you know, PhDs and whatever it is, you know, to figure out how to do things anymore. You know, you could get all that information on the internet and use things for free. I mean, they spent hardly any money developing this idea until they started. Somebody's at the door. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's cool. So watch them and learn how you won't have brown plants anymore. 
Well, James Canyon, more at digitalspringnet.com, and you single-handedly are going to take all my plants in the house and get them off a of death row, aren't you? With Daisy, <laughs> right? She is. Man, a fifteen-dollar product. I just put it in the plant, and it tells me when the water, when the sunshine, it, you know, what to do. Everything and timing, and God, it's amazing. I don't know how you do it for fifteen dollars. Plus the technology. You were telling me before. Before we went on the air that God I mean people were charging like you cost a thousand dollars to get an instrument like this that you're giving out for 15 man yeah, yeah. and that's because you're a smart engineer or are you just hate to see in your garden <laughs> burn up you know as, as, as an engineer I majored in fields and waves and one of the first things you do, one of the, one of the elementary things you do is you do time domain reflectometry measurements. And you do it the old fashioned way with something called a slotted line. And uh, uh, <laughs> if you look at soil moisture today, people have taken the, that time domain reflectometry measurements and they use it to measure soil. So what we did was we figured out a way to take, to, ma to, bu to build an inexpensive transducer right. to convert, to be able to make that time to domain reflectometry measurement very inexpensively and that's the heart of our patent we have a patent on it and uh, that's that's what's inside our products so in other words somebody the only people that had something like this so people in a big ag business or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. that had something like that. so you're giving it to the average person on the street so they get plants longer save a whole bunch of money you know instead of buying new plants all the time so, so today, if you go to the store, and for $15, you can buy a resistivity sensor. A resistivity sensor takes two wires, sticks it in the ground, and measures resistance between those wires. Uh -huh. If you move it, the resistivity goes all over the place. Uh -huh. But it's a toy. It's inexpensive, yeah. so nobody cares. What we're doing here, or we're, our goal here is to provide uh, uh, very high-quality sensing um, uh, for a very good price. And one of the one of the one of the major differences between our product and other products is that our product is self-calibrating. So what we do is, is before we take a measurement, we actually calibrate the sensor in, in the soil that you've got. And, and that, just that alone separates us uh, quite. So uh, you, you have a professional product that you're able to get down to $15. It sounds like a toy, but it's not. And it's real. But more importantly, it seems like you know a family could start teaching their children about the growth of plants or anything else that is important in our life, you know, and so they don't have to, you know, think about vegetables only coming from Safeway. You know, um, when I have three children, and, and as I raise my children, you know, there are the, the children like the tablets today, right? They, they they're all, you see them, they're infants, and they're playing with their tablets. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great to have a game rooted in reality? You know, children of, of a young age can't tell the difference between imaginary and, and real. But wouldn't it be great, great to have a game like, like, like the Daisy app where you could get a plant, you could put the sensor in the plant, and now the plant can talk to you and tell you how it, how, if it has enough water, if it has enough light, if, 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 if it's too hot or too cold. And this is something that it, that's tangible that children can, can play with and we think provides lots of value. Well, but, but you haven't, not me, you said what if, but the what if is today. The and you're going to be today. shipping, <laughs> you're going to be shipping these things in a month or two. So people can have them, you know, and, and that's what's cool. I mean, the, the future is here just for certain people that know about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. So th this is a, this is a new category device. Um, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a, there's, it's very simple to operate. It has no on-off switch. Um, you download the app, you stick the thing in the soil, and the, the device will automatically... Uh, so kids uh, could talk to the plant, or actually the plant's talking to the kids, right? And the plant's talking to the kids, but at least you get a little bit of feedback. It's right. Than... Yeah. And it, Disney is not involved in this at all. <laughs> 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 Not some cartoon plant. It's a real plant telling it it's, it's thirsty. It, it's I mean, what a way to learn. I mean, that, that's that's what's it. Right. It's it's it's, 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 it's
we believe there's uh, we're trying to pack a lot of value uh -huh. into a, a good quality product. But, well, it, it, I mean, it's fun, but it, it, it's, as you say, based in reality and learn. I mean, I'm a city kid. I don't know about anything. I don't plan to. we got plans around here, and I just go around every couple of months, get rid of the brown ones, and put new green ones in. Yeah. <laughs> And I won't have to do that anymore. For 15 bucks, I suck this thing in, look at my app, <laughs> and it's screaming to get for water. And, and the but problem then, solved. But, but, but then, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the key things about our app is, is we have our, an internal Wikipedia page. We call it our, our plant wiki. And our plant wiki, if the, let's say you, you decide that you want to grow a vegetable garden, or maybe you want to grow some, uh, some spices. Some of these spice plants are, are difficult to grow, are difficult to grow, and so so you say you want to look up so you want to grow cilantro. When you look at the plant, when you type in the the device, when you type the right. plant type of the device that you want to put your sensor in, um, the 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 plant wiki will will come up and says this is cilantro. You can't overwater it not even once because you'll kill the plant. So you get all these great warnings inside the app, which which will help you. Help help improve your your chance of. So I, I don't have to call the county cooperative extension service or anything like that to find this out. <laughs> there goes my government program I'm talking about. It, it's, they're out of business now because of your app. But you also have an, another product. Uh, you know, by the way, your stick, Kickstarter campaign only has a, a week or two left. So people, if they're interested, it's read this to you now. And what's needed by I think your Kickstarter page is, is the video. I mean, to go on just see the video and the, the clever cartoons you have. You, you, for an engineer, you did real good. So, <laughs> uh, well, thank you. I, I had some help with the with the, with the video. <laughs> but you have another product for people to keep their lawns watered, and that's and that's what got you in this business, wasn't it? It is. So our product. So this is. So this is a. This is the Daisy. This is Echo, uh -huh. and Echo is a sensor for your lawn. And although we don't have a Kickstarter on Echo today, we may yeah. we may bring one on later on in the year. But um, so Echo uh, is is a device you put in your in your in your lawn, and you put in one per zone, and it measures your the soil moisture in your lawn, and it connects up to your existing uh, sprinkler system. Our goal is to have half your water consumption. So if you're paying the rates that we pay here for water in San Diego, then um, you'll you'll save a hundred dollars about every quarter. Wow. Well, uh, that, that's going to more than pay for that. And that's available on digitalspring.net or digitalspringnet.com. And then only the daisy is on Kickstarter, but through digitalspringnet.com, you could get to the Kickstarter program or find out about all the programs. And, and yes. that's available. And, and uh, it's wonderful. It's nice that you got out of, what were you doing? Like telecommunications or something <laughs> like that? And you get out and start worrying about your lawn. And now you'd use your smarts and intelligence for us to live greener and cheaper <laughs> and save water that's that's the next oil i think is water you know water is a, is a is a is a is a is a finite resource um most of the water has salt in it and it's it's very difficult for us to use um, but fresh water is, uh, you know, the, here in the southwestern United States, uh, you know, we're in a drought right now. And, the, you know, the different states, they kind of fight over water. And, and uh, even w in, even intrastate, uh, there are, within California, there are, there are people yeah, fighting yeah, for I water. No, the no Central Valley, the, no the Central Valley, if you look at the Central Valley, there's, yeah. it's, it's, it's barren there right really now. Wild. Yeah, no, and that's why, to me, what you're doing, too, is a step towards solving that problem, which seems even more important, but, but the other one sounds more fun with Daisy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jay. Wonderful to have you, and thanks for being there and you know, focusing your resources, trying to help the rest of us. Uh, and it, you go to Digital Spring Net dot com that will take you to kickstarter or anything else you want to know about saving green plants or saving your lawn or anything to do with that thank you again jim thank you matt right. it was good talking with you now here's a woman who's going to put all the big 
designers out of business. <laughs> and she's gonna do it with the sharing economy. That's right. <laughs> because she has a website now that anybody has a fancy dress. You know, like people and women go out, and yeah, I know I'm the same way. <laughs> go out and spend a fortune on, on, on some fancy dress for or an outfit, you know, and they hardly wear it. Well, now she has a website. You put your dress on the website, and you're not selling it. It's not like a garage sale or anything like that. You're renting. Other people just need it once. You know, other people need it once or whatever. And, and, and you're making back the money that you spent on the dress. You know, in a couple of weeks or months or whatever. God. And if you need it yourself, it's still available. Now, isn't that great? See, that's part of the sharing economy. That's why, oh, we can only do that with technology uh, because it, it, it gets a critical mass. You have, you know, thousands of people looking at this website. Hey, yeah, that, that, that neat dress. If you only know your girlfriends or whatever, or the people in your circle who know about that dress now. No, that's not like that anymore. So thousands of people. So you have bigger opportunities to make money or whatever. And, 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 and that's what she's doing with this website, you know, and uh, you put it on, you can even get it the same day. That's what's amazing. They dry clean it after every time it's used and things like that. So that's why what's happening, we don't need as much to live anymore because of the internet, because we could share so much. I mean, now you see the younger people in our society don't even want to own stuff. Both my kids don't want cars. Yeah. I thought, oh, you can't live without a car. But no, I mean, they have Uber, or share rides, and all this kind of stuff going on. They want cars, a penny ass, and too much money, and whatever. So, you know, why spend all that money when you don't have to? You don't have to now because of the internet. It's making it possible. So watch her. <laughs> she, it's fashion. So we spend a lot of money on fashion in this country, right? <laughs> and she's going to make money out of doing that because she's just the middle person. Make a bunch of money doing this. So watch. Well, Lona Leah Duncan, but more importantly than that, it's Styleland. Styleland.com. And, and, and what you're going to do is make my wife look like a fashion model <laughs> for next to nothing. Man, you have designer dresses on your website that people could borrow for such little money, right? Just for like our big occasion we want to go to and these things I was on the website looking at, man, I, I know, I see, I shop for my wife a lot. I put her in the dress room and I say, hey, this, this, I know what she likes or whatever and I know what I like to see her in so it saves a lot of time. I could go on your site, I see at least six to eight things that I could grab right now, put it on her, and they just look terrific. What made you think of this thing? Well, I love fashion and I never want to wear the same thing twice. Ah. Uh, so I wanted a way to be able to access high-end fashion without having to pay hundreds of dollars on every single item that I wanted. <laughs> In other words, once you stop being a model, you figure out, hey, I got to buy this stuff myself. <laughs> yep, exactly. Instead of getting it for free, now you have to pay. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, how do I access this stuff and not have to pay an arm and a leg for every single piece I want? Yeah. So I and that, yeah. And that fancy stuff you're not going to wear every day anyway. So it, it's just for that occasion. And exactly. this is a perfect, a perfect. Uh, and you've won awards for being an entrepreneur in this business, haven't you? Yeah, no, we entered a lot of competitions and people like our idea. So we won mm -hmm. multiple competitions, uh, have been part of very important programs. Uh, and this is how we came up, uh, you know, with a product and launched it in San Francisco. It's been quite successful. And now we're going to New York and other cities around the, the U.S. But you could do it from anywhere. You don't have to be in San Francisco. That's just for the overnight delivery, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or so like you have TV. overnight delivery. If I'm stuck for a party tomorrow and I live in San Francisco or New York, I look on the website, hey, get that thing over here and for you know 30 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever it is, I got a beautiful date, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but now anywhere across the country could really either contribute their you know, high-end fashion <laughs> to your site and make money out of it. And you say that you can make a heck of a lot more money from your high-end clothes by renting than you can by going to consignment shop. Mm -hmm. yeah, not well, think about it. The reason I started the company was that I was seeing that women were not getting enough money for their dresses yeah. when they were selling them. 
So for example, you buy a dress for $500, maybe you get $50, so 10% of the retail price when you sell it. Yeah, because once you wear something, the value of it goes down. Yeah. So what we saw was that there was an opportunity for women to rent those out and make that $50 every time they rent it out. So, I mean, you rent it 10 times, you got all your money back, you know? exactly. and you still own it. That's what's so terrific. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the cool part about this. It helps with buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. So you bought this item, it's $500, and you're like, man, I only wore it once or twice. Now you can monetize that on Styland and get that money back every time. So, so you're talking like an MBA graduate and a, and a model. Right. <laughs> monetize your wardrobe. You know, do they t talk about that on the runway at all? <laughs> well, I mean, these days you have to be both. Uh, <laughs> right. you know, it's not enough to be one. one yeah, or right. <laughs> and so basically, I could go on your site, you know, and if I have nice stuff in the closet that I really wear, I could I could send it to you guys. And uh, uh, and they rent it out. And if I want it back, though, you send it back to me, right? If I have a special, hey, I want to wear that again. You send it back, and, and then you dry clean it every time it's used, and it goes back in the room. And what's neat about it, though, you send packaging both ways, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So if I go out and get something for my wife next week, you're sending it to me, you know, and it's a package, and there's another package already to send it back, so I don't have to worry about a thing. Exactly, right? exactly. super easy. Wow. And, 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 and really, some of the thing I've seen in there, I mean, I love color. Like every time I'm in New York City, I go to Desigual and, and, and I'm in there looking for all these wonderful color things and I'm taking photographs and sending my wife. And, and I see stuff, you know, that I could get a fraction of the price I could even get on Desigual <laughs> that I could get on your place, you know, so yeah. when we go out place, yeah. I love, I love color too, just like you, uh, yeah. as well as sequins and very like flashy yeah. things. I think, uh, you know, it's a peacock theory. You want to be noticed, you want to be seen. And I think color is the perfect way to do that in any scenario, whether it's a date night or a girl's night out, a birthday party, Christmas party, New Year's Eve, uh, you want to stand out. You know, it's funny, you talk about, you, know, you said you just finished an MBA, I don't know when, but after modeling anyway, and, and I went to a creativity contest or a conference out in Fairfax, which is like our Silicon Valley, and they're all talking about being creative and how you know, creative environment and creative culture and that creates jobs, and they're all in black suits. You know, even the women. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> Very boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a woman after my own heart, man. Boy, it's anybody can like, spice up the life. I see, I walk around like this every day of my life, and people smile at me. They don't know me. But, man, to have that reflection coming back and people treat me nicer, I think colors uh, are. Color. You should see yeah. my pants. My pants. Said, oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, well, that's what we need in life. We need to, you know, life is terrible, I feel. And the only way you're going to get through it is by having fun and having exactly. bright things. There's enough people throwing doom and gloom in your life. So, yep. and, and you've got to do it yourself because nobody else is it. So, one way to find out is to go to styleland.com. And for you as a woman or woman in your life, you got to educate them about this tour because it's going to save you a ton of dough it's going to make you look delicious <laughs> and, and, and taste and value for money you can't beat it and it and it's all because of the internet i mean you start in a whole new fashion industry and you don't even know the store or you don't even own a piece of fabric yep, yep. <laughs> It's just sitting in other people's closets that you're organizing and getting it out to me. Man, what a wonderful thing to do. Thank you. Well, Thanks. Thank you for being there, Lana. It's so nice to meet you and uh, talk to somebody as creative as this that's helping the rest of us dress a little better, which we have to do. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. You're amazing. Your energy is fantastic. And oh, it's fun because of people like you are doing fun things in the world it's good to share it with people so people should go and find out about you because it costs nothing to try it right and at styleland.com s-t-y-l-e-l-e-n-d.com yeah. <laughs> thank you take care thank you. thank you so much bye